It's, it's very, uh, very interesting because you, because you just came from visiting the CMS. So you remember the, the mass of CMS? 14,000. Uh, Compared to this, huh? this is a, a lightweight detector. But for stuff being taken to orbit, it's pretty big. That's correct. So uh, this also, of course, limits the energy range which you can observe. Well, but still a very, a very interesting range. So it goes from a few GV up to tera electron volts. And uh, this is a very important region. Then the power consumption, it's like a, a water boiler. Not yeah. so much. Yeah, um, yeah so um, it's basically... Is this the full data, or is it already um, cut off by a trigger? Um, so the, the full, no, it's, it's full data. Um, so the, the thing is, um, the good thing about the cosmic razor is that you, you observe single events. Single events. They so spoke about 600,000 events per second. Okay. This, this you can you can easily observe with your detector. It's, it's not so complicated like in, in the LHC, where every 25 or 50 nanoseconds, like thousands of, of particles are created and go through your detector. This is basically very very easy to do. Um, so the, the data that is that has been sent down is about 300 kilobytes or megabyte per second. And uh, the uh, amount that is collected there is about a gigabyte. Okay? So they reduce just the file size and then to be able to send it down. Um, since, the, since the start up of the experiment, about 60 billion uh, cosmic ray events have been collected. 60 billion. 60 the actual amount of data that all the analyses are based on. And though so you if you calculate it, um, something for your brain, it's about a thousand events per second. Um, so the uh, the eyes of lifetime, you see it, twenty twenty or longer, actually the the matter was constructed to only the the around for three to four years. Um, that is because the magnet that was originally planned to be used um, had to be replaced just before the start. At that time, it was thought that they could use a, um, um, a superconductor magnet. But they struggled when they tested it. So they replaced it with the old magnet that we used in the AMS alone. This automatically um, increased or had to uh, let to increase in the running of this thing because the, uh, the strength of the magnet was reduced by a factor of four or five. So that means if you reduce the magnet strength by a factor of four or five, then you need to run longer in order to reach the same precision, especially at the high momentum range when you do the measurement. That's why <laughs> it automatically uh, been extended. Now the problem is, will all the other materials that were used um, also keep with the extension? I don't know. But uh, so far it's still running. So it started in May 2011. We already exceed this the um, um, nominal um, time. So it's 2015, four years already. Looks very promising. Okay. Um, as I explained, so these are the star trackers. Um, they measure uh, the positioning of the detector. Um, and then I, I taught you about this, this order of detectors you have to follow. Imagine you want to measure the energy of a particle. If you want to measure the energy of a particle, you do this with Calorimetry. With calorimeters, it goes like this. The particle goes in, you try to absorb as much of the energy um, of the particle as possible. And 
Ideal would be like it is in CMS, if you want to measure the energy of an electron, the electrode goes into the colorimeter and it doesn't come out. Because it gets stuck, it does something to your detector, produces secondary particles, stuff, stuff, stuff. You read out what happened inside and you transfer this right into an amount of energy. Okay, this is, this is easy. Well, it's not so easy because the detector is not the colorimeter is not Oh, that, you can kind of well guess about what happens inside. But anyway, if you do the energy measurement at, um, at the beginning, then you can forget about any momentum measurement of the particle. Because the calorimeter absorbs energy. At the same time, that reduces not only the energy, but also the momentum. So then you measure the momentum later and while when you start with measuring the momentum, the, of course, measuring the momentum means that you need to detect the particle. It also needs to, to deposit energy. When you do this with silicon, and in silicon, the energy deposited by the particle is way, 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 way less than in the calorie. So that's why you need to do the uh, momentum measurement before the energy measurement. And so this happens here. Inside the magnet, in different layers of uh, silicon detectors. And then you have uh, other detectors, uh, the rich ring and imaging Cherenkov detector and the transition radiation detector, which basically act as, okay, they both measure like the velocity of the particle. This is not the main, the main purpose why we use this guy. We use them to distinguish between particles. Because different particles leave different signals in those detectors. And that's very important because you can imagine if we look out for positrons, which are electrically positive, which are positively electrically charged, okay, um, and these guys are kind of rare, you have to distinguish <coughs> those particles from protons. You have a lot of protons in the primary cosmic rays, about 90% of the primary cosmic rays consist of protons. Though you have many events of protons, many of protons go through the detector. And you have to distinguish the protons from the positrons. So different particles create different signals in those detectors, and that's how you're able to distinguish. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. That's it, right? It's about five meter long and three point five meter in diameter. A small, nice little baby doing a good job. And here you can see event display. So this is this is interesting for you. So um, this is just to get a picture of the events. Understand what's going on. So particles is coming from from the top and then going through the detector. And you see different deposits and energy in here. You see the tracks uh, reconstructed from only the hits. So, of course, the, the track is reconstructed by only the hits in several layers of the detectors. It's basically the same procedure as in the LHC experiment. Right? And in LHC, it's, it's even more complex because you have these thousands of, of tracks thousands of particles going through the detector and you don't know where they actually collide. So what you have to do from what you also have to do from your information from the tracks is to reconstruct the interaction point. Not sure this this came out this morning. But this is um, um, a main difference here from LHC experiments to, to this guy. Okay, so far? Is it good? Yeah. Was the was the level right? Is it too complicated? No? Is it okay? So um, I think it's it's time to send you to the CERN control center. Um, so you take the bus, you go to the control center, you tell the others that um, AMS is a nice place to visit. <laughs> okay? So leave the CERN control center. It's not so. Good.